First couple of years of marriage um, were, were, were brutal. I was a very emotional person. I came in selfish. There was a lot of you know, sarcasm on his part and a lot of um, emotion on my part. I would say without exaggerating that we fought every day. Sarah and Chad Markley couldn't understand why their young marriage was failing. After all, they grew up in the church and always tried to do the right thing. In fact, Chad was even the worship leader at their church. But they were young, barely 21 when they married. So with their newfound sense of freedom from their parents, they started to explore a lifestyle that they had been taught was forbidden. The only time they didn't fight was when they were partying. I can remember a number of times showing up on a Sunday morning and nobody knew. Um, I mean, people should have known, but I'd still be buzzed from the night before. We started going out, we started, you know, dancing. We were just kind of living really free, as, as kind of as free as you can be, yet still be married. Then it escalated to another level, pornography. Instead of me saying, oh no, what are you doing? It was, it was interesting and captivating and it was something I began to desire. I don't think we were, we were willing to admit how bad off we were. Uh, but like I said, I'd grown up in this, you know, please God or, or, or please do what was right type of a mentality. And once you get to a certain age, then it's kind of like, what's the motivation anymore? I had been overweight growing up, and then I lost about 60 pounds. Before, men had never looked at me, and then after that point, I was getting flirted with walking down the street. It made me feel great. It made me feel like I had, was finally pretty. I never called myself a workaholic, but I, I became that. I found things that were exciting, that provided distraction, um, and sort of filled the void. Chad started working away from home up to four days a week, and Sarah started getting attention from one of Chad's close friends. He was also married. So I started talking a lot to this other man and we talked on the phone, we hung out. And for a long time, it was just this friendship, this emotional bond. But that emotional bond turned into something more. I was trying not to do it. I was trying to be good or better than I was. Then it kind of went full, full, uh, full, or into, into a, a completely physical relationship at that point. Every time I was with him and we did something that I would have had to hit, hide from my husband, there was guilt. There was always guilt. But it was just, the guilt was so much less than the desire. I hated myself. I hated what I was doing, but I really didn't know how to get out of it. I didn't know what to do. I didn't know, I couldn't tell. If I told, then my world would come crashing down. The affair lasted for three years until a friend of Sarah's guessed her secret and outed Sarah to their pastors. The next Sunday after church, their pastors called Chad and Sarah to the back office. I'm totally thinking about me and what I was, what I was doing. Like, did they know I was looking at porn? Do they know that we've been like totally getting like hammered on the weekends? I mean, well, what do they know? I'm not in any way, shape or form thinking about Sarah at all. And then they said, Sarah, you have something to tell Chad. I had a choice, I could keep lying, and I would probably would have been believed by them at that point, and maybe even by Chad. Um, or I could tell the truth and I could be done with it, no matter what the consequences were. And um, what I did is I decided to tell the truth. My first reaction, or my first feeling was, it was just shock. I didn't know if I was gonna lose my daughter. I didn't know if I was gonna lose my, my husband. I didn't know if I was gonna lose, I don't know if I was going to lose everything because, but, sorry, but that was, being done with that and being right with God and with my husband was more important. While Sarah spent the night at her parents' house, the next day they met up at the screening of the Passion of the Christ they had already committed to attend the screening months prior. The most amazing thing happened because we were sitting next to each other watching this film. I had just confessed to an affair, watching in gory and in, in brilliant detail the beating and crucifixion of Jesus. I was broken. I was just bawling my eyes out. I'm sobbing. And it was like the Lord sort of orchestrated a moment to remind me of the extent He went through to restore relationship with me. I really come to understand the gravity of my sin and how much it had both hurt 
Jesus, just my sin had hurt Jesus, not just my husband, but it had, it had hurt the Lord. I mean, how could I stand before God and say, you know what? Hey, thanks for everything you did for me and all of my stupidity. Oh, but this was just too much. He was very sad still, but he had been going through his own transformation over the past, those past 24 hours. And he said to me, How can I not forgive you when so much has been forgiven of me? That day and a half or so was the point of us deciding to be done, both of us, um, but me particularly, deciding to be done with an old way of living, a sinful way, a hurtful way, um, a selfish way of living. Both Sarah and Chad recommitted their lives to Jesus Christ that day. Chad even stepped down from his church position as worship leader. So it's both people committing and coming to the point where no matter what it entails, we're gonna make it work. We cut our cable, we poured out all of our alcohol, we, we started going to marital counseling, Christian counseling. We just cleaned everything out, spiritually, physically, cut all ties. It was like we were together like all the time. And as we grew closer together as a couple in a pure way, we were also growing closer to God too. We didn't fight and we didn't argue. And it was like, this is awesome. Since then, Chad and Sarah have renewed their wedding vows. They both realized that their old marriage had to die so that God could rebuild their new marriage. The image that I always have of him whenever I think of God, just as, as a savior, as, as the savior, as the only thing that's, that's ever been able to save me. Then I know. The key to it all is that you have to be willing to do what Christ did in going to the cross. And you think about what are the things that he suffered. He suffered embarrassment, suffered shame. There was pain involved. There was death involved. So it comes down to what are you willing to give up in exchange for what he has? You're